Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Позвольте мне открыть конференцию Комитета РСПП по техническому регулированию, стандартизации и оценке соответствия. К сожалению, Дмитрий Александрович сейчас находится в полете, поэтому он поручил мне зачитать приветствие нашей конференции. Уважаемые коллеги, дорогие друзья, приветствую ставшую уже традиционной конференцию по стандартизации в рамках Иннопрома. Цифровые технологии активно врываются в нашу жизнь, и получилось так, что пандемия стала катализатором этих процессов. Работа на Remote work demonstrated an advantage of digital technologies, their potential in organization of conferences. And of course, today we need to speak about digitalization because this is a perspective of not only overcoming the economic crisis, but further development of Russian industry. Today, Russian industry is implementing a number of projects in standardization. Russian manufacturers of railway equipment actively deploy digital manufacturing. The projects are being implemented by intelligent locomotives, digital twins, digital depot, which allows to establish the unified digital environment of exchange of data between manufacturers of railway equipment and their operators. I shall say that a number of large companies in Russia are successfully implement digitalization projects, including Kamas, Rosgazpromneft, Rosatom, Rosseti. But today Russia needs unified policy of digitalization of industry because other countries implement a number of similar projects, in particular, Industry 4.0 project in Germany. That is why a technical council is very important in this sphere for digital economy, which two years ago within the Inaprom, established by the Russian Union of Entrepreneurs and Industrialists and, and Eastern Committee of German Economy, Today, the Council includes more than 100 experts from both Germany and Russia, and we are thankful to our German colleagues for the active participation in the operation of the Council and participation in our conference. Aim of our cooperation is unification of legislative framework of Russia and Germany within the digital production sphere, development of quality infrastructure and joint elaboration of IT standards for digital platforms. We believe that today there is a need on adoption of a state-based solution on deployment of a platform of Russian platform industry for zero and experts of the committee, experts of the council believe that in order to create this platform industry for zero we need to the transformation of our industry to advanced planning and management methods similar to industry for zero platform interdisciplinary plan on russian platform of industry for zero in the russian federation adoption and agreement on the IT standards complex for platform industry for zero. I'm confident that our conference will become a milestone on the pace of establishment of Russian digital platform industry for zero in the Russian Federation. And now I would like to give the floor for a welcoming speech to the president of the Union of Entrepreneurs and Industrialists, Mr. Shahin. Unfortunately, the microphone is off. Sorry. <coughs> I beg your pardon. 
On behalf of Russian Union of Entrepreneurs and Industrialists, I welcome participants and organizers of online session standardization as foundation of Industry 4.0. For us, it's a traditional meeting, it's not the first one, including on the platform of Inaprom. The situation which we faced during the recent month confirmed the position of the companies investing in digitalization, not only under the pandemic conditions, remote work in particular, and all the further cooperation and development. New approaches to digitalization, transformation to remote work, cooperation with clients, public agencies in electronic format are all our everyday life an alternative of digital platform, unfortunately, is only termination of activities of many industrial companies. This morning, we have a, had a meeting of Coordination Council on counteraction of coronavirus, and our guest was head of Rospatriot Nadzor, Anna Popova. We discussed a number of questions related with the activities of companies, industrial enterprises, mining enterprises under the conditions of pandemic. And we received additional confirmation of the fact that digital platforms and industry 4.0, Internet of Things, tools of remote work, including office operation, are not only a way of adaptation to the coronavirus, but also probably will become an element of our everyday life in the future. Our business is prepared for radical changes. The situation which we have now is not only a challenge and a risk, but also an opportunity to grow in the future. Undoubtedly, more strategic and long-term solutions should contribute to that, which are stipulated in the National Plan of Activities, which should guarantee and maintain the recovery of the income of population, recovery of economy and structural changes in a long-term perspective. This plan was developed by the government with active participation of the Russian business and the Union of Entrepreneurs and industrialists in particular. I hope that the president will adopt this plan. In this case, we will have an opportunity to discuss not only tools to adapt to the coronavirus and crisis, but about fast structural reforms, which we have been discussing in the past and which are necessary to implement. And now we have a window of opportunities to accelerate the taking of measures necessary. In regards of our di dialogue with the government, the key point is the launch of new investment cycle. This cycle is based, first of all, on new high technologies, digital technologies, in particular, such tools of support of manufacturing and investment activities as special investment contracts in the new version, so-called SPIC2, agreements on protection and encouraging of investment. The legal framework for that will be prepared as soon as possible on these agreements of protection of investment. And the key point which the business emphasized is stipulated and articulated very in every document is protection of business in all the period of investment, which is equally important for both Russian and foreign investments. There are no any preferences for Russian companies in comparison with the foreign companies operating in Russia. Speak one mechanism did not provide for such preferences as well. One of the key elements of achieving this goal is maximum implementation of digital technologies in, in industry, which means transformation and transition to industry 4.0. 
In this regard, we would like to emphasize the role of German and Russian cooperation in this sphere. I'm talking about Russian and German initiative of industrialization grid initiative, which was started in 2017 by the Union and the German Economic Committee. Leading companies from both countries join these initiatives. Also, there are associations, Russian, German Chamber of Foreign Trade. Businesses of two countries are actively cooperating in this sphere. Of course, there are some spheres where we need to enhance our cooperation, including digital standardization, which is a very clear area of cooperation for businesses. I believe that digital platforms allow us to dynamically discuss particular issues, especially under conditions when face-to-face -face meeting are not possible. Even when restrictions are removed, we will have an opportunity to meet more often using digital platforms. I shall say that the grid platform, to a certain extent, is the core of Russian and German cooperation. Russia and Germany, unlike business relations of Russia with other countries, does not include intergovernmental committee on business and economic cooperation. Mainly, it is related with historical reasons. Before 2014, leaders of our countries met regularly and under the auspice of the two heads of states, we always conducted business meetings, which was one of the most efficient ways of intergovernmental and intercountry cooperation. Now our heads of governments do not meet, and we see that the real potential of business cooperation between Russia and Germany, including digital sphere, is lagging behind other countries. Other countries and Russia have intergovernmental commissions headed by authorities, ministers, vice prime ministers of countries. And business has an opportunity to conduct meetings of bilateral business units under the auspice of these intergovernmental committees and to lobby their interests. That would be great to think using the Inaprom, Inaprom platform to think on how to increase the level of our business cooperation. And now we're thinking on establishment of a council or a committee on economic and business and investment cooperation with Germany, at least on our side, on the Russian side, in order to involve all the Russian leading companies, all the Russian associations interested in bilateral cooperation. I believe that on behalf of Germany, this Western Committee and other associations, chambers of commerce could also join these efforts. I believe that having the conditions of so-called frozen political relations, we could establish a unified business platform giving a signal to political leaders that even under such a complicated geopolitical conditions we have an opportunity to promote particular projects and to establish technological foundation and basis for cooperation standardization is something that is above politics and our cooperation in the sphere of digital standardization could also remove many technical restrictions in trade and investment. And to summarize, I would like to add that the conference organized within Inaprom by the Committee of the Union of Entrepreneurs and Industrialists are traditional. I would like to thank our German colleagues for their active participation in this conference, undoubtedly they become catalyzers of development of not only standardization in different spheres of industry and in general 
cooperation in industrial and digital spheres. That is why I'm confident that this exchange of experience will contribute to promotion of establishment of platforms, including the Russian platform Industry 4.0, decisions and solutions which allow Russian industry to adopt advanced methods of management, planning, etc. And we would like our German colleagues to have some benefits on this conversation and understanding that Russia is not only recipient of German experience, but we also have company which also could contribute to industry for zero development in Germany. I wish you the best of success and health, of course, because this is a traditional wish at every meeting, including at every reception, because health is necessary for business as well. Thank you very much. Коллеги, у нас очень жесткий регламент, и у каждого нового выступления только 10 минут. Пожалуйста, укладывайтесь в это время. А следующее слово я предоставляю председателю Совета директоров СМС групп, что председателю нашего совета с немецкой стороны господину Бухарду Дамен. Thank you very much. I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, yeah, you got it. Yeah, dear Mr. Bespozvanik, dear Mr. Shokin, dear Mr. Lotsmanov, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me for today's virtual conference. I'm glad to join the today's session about the technical regulations and the changes in value added chains adopting Industry 4.0 between Russia and German companies. As the German sponsor of the German Russian initiative on technical regulations, I would like to say this initiative is absolutely necessary in this process. During the last two years, we found a common language in the 11 active working groups. We were making good progress. The initiative is not only an economic necessity, but also a very positive political signal. And I support Mr. Schochen's remark that we all both sides hope for bilateral political exchanges of our leaders to take place in the future again, because this will and this can only support our common business relations. Many thanks to our partners from the RSPP and the involved Russian companies and organizations. First of all, to Mr. Schoffer and Mr. Pumpiansky. We are ready to continue this initiative during the next years. The common goal is to make collaboration between Russian and German companies easier and to reduce complexity and bureaucracy. To open the markets for each other and to set up the regulatory framework for an open market. The biggest markets are the United States and the European single market. Germany has a huge part of this market, opens the door to the whole European market to more than 500 million customers. The market entry is possible only by using harmonized standards and norms, valid certificates, recognized accreditation bodies, calibration laboratories, etc. Almost all norms and standards are the same within the EU, who has the norm, has the market. Fitting to one member of the EU, like Germany, means a perfect fit for the whole European market entry. 14 of Germany's top 20 trading partners are EU member states. Trade between the European Union is constantly growing, and the trade barriers don't exist any longer in this economic market area. The technical regulations initiative is a big change, a big chance to increase Russian exports to the EU and to diversify Russian exports. On the other hand, Germany ranks second after China in trade volume with Russia. Germany is the biggest industrial investor, 
has the most localized companies. That means technology transfer, qualification of suppliers, international standards, links to international industrial networks, and also employee qualification and training. Germany is a logic partner for modernizing the Russian manufacturing industry. The majority of products, services, material and non-material goods require mandatory conformity assessment. The structure of the German-Russian trade gives a clear picture of the current situation. German exports to Russia are mainly high-tech and industrial goods. German imports from Russia are almost covering all commodities. To change this picture, German-Russian initiative on technical regulation is a suitable and useful tool. We are willing to improve the present situation and to create a win-win situation for both parties. You know better than I do, export of hydrocarbons is no longer a future concept. Diversity of exports is also necessary because of the decarbonization of the industry, especially on the sample of the industry I'm active in, the steel industry. Whereas the demand of oil and gas is continuing to decrease in future. The EU plans a so-called Green Deal the plan includes potential carbon tariffs for countries that don't curtail their greenhouse gas pollution at the same rate. Digitalization is the future to generate further growth. Industry 4.0 is a solution for the real world for manufacturing industries like machinery and plants, the automotive sector, chemical sector, electronical engineering, and even for raw material extraction. Industry 4.0 was invented by German companies to connect the internet to the internet of things, to the production IoT. Digitalization of all industry, including sales, services, and logistics. Digital transformation is also a major area in our initiative. Some working groups cover smart grids, cybersecurity, ontology and semantics, and even Industry 4.0. The international cooperation become even more important in the digital age. National solutions are a phase of out model, a phase of the past. Machines talking to machines crossing national frontiers is a matter of tomorrow. The most commonly traded goods, apart from commodities and software, comes from the automotive sector. The machinery and plants, chemicals, agriculture, even the health sector, electronics, and so on. All of those are part of our initiative. These are also the most exported German goods to all countries in the world. We, as a German economy, are ready to collaborate with the Russian companies to make real industrial projects happening in both countries and economic regions in the EU and the Eurasian Economic Union. The technical regulations Standards and norms are the basis for all economic activities and future success. We don't want to increase the difficulties. We don't want to build more trade barriers and other restrictions in international trade. Set picture shows all barriers existing in international trade by today. All of these constraints prevent business opportunities between all parties involved and also between Germany and Russia. Our initiative should be a counter model. I'm absolutely sure about the success of our German-Russian in initiative on technical regulations. Thank you very much for all your participation in the working groups and for everybody listening to the attention. Thank you so much. So closing up. Thank you very much, Mr. Damen, for a very interesting presentation. И если позволите, я коротко расскажу о... And if you allow me, I will briefly tell you about the interim results of work of our board. Please have the presentation on.
Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Once again, I would like to tell a couple of words about our work, the work of our board. I would say the interaction of the industrial circus of Russia and Germany, this interaction is paid a lot of attention on the government level, and these issues were discussed at the meeting of our President Vladimir Putin with the management of uh, the German Committee of Eastern Economies in December this year, and we are following these agreements. And the committee that is being headed by Mr. Putansky, and I would say that our committee is functioning for more than 15 years, we've implemented a lot of large-scale projects with our German colleagues. In 2009, we signed an agreement on cooperation between the committee with Dean, and in 2011, we signed, we, we've implemented large-scale projects on technical regulation in the scope of the roundtable of uh, between uh, the RSPP and uh, EU. And two years ago at Inaprom, the agreement was signed between RSPP and the Eastern Committee of uh, German Economy in terms of technical regulation. The board on technical regulation and standardization was established for digital economy. And this board is successfully working on July the 10th. This agreement was signed. And on the second day, on July the 11th, we've hosted the first meeting of the board and we discussed the plans for our future work. Why standardization is so important? The system of standardization and conformity assessment that was developed was created about 100 years ago for this second technological layout. And we are talking today about digital technologies and digital standards for Industry 4.0. And we are speaking about equipping the production facilities with machines. That is why the approach to standardization should be totally different. If those disadvantages and difference in standards that we used to have, having the difference in railway track, those could be compensated by just uh, changing the wheels at the border between Europe and Russia. But speaking about digital space, it's impossible. That is why standards should be uniform and the same and the industry and experts in Russia, Germany and other countries should work together on development of the uniform standards. And this is the main topic our board is dedicated to in its work. And it's not by chance that the German industry for zero is the Committee on Standardization in which we have the representations of experts from leading industries and Ministry of Energy and Economy, Ministry for Research and Science and different standardization boards of Germany. And that is why we need to concentrate the efforts of the Russian industry of Rostandard and uh, Ministry of Industry and Trade on development of the set of standards for digital platform uh, in the Russian Federation under Industry 4.0. Our board from the Russian side is headed by Dmitry Pumpiansky, and from German side, uh, Mr. Um, Burhard Dammert. And thank you very much for your presentation. We are engaged in traditional directions, such as implementation of technical requirements and directives, EU directives, procedures for conformity assessment and product certification. But also another circle of issues is related to digitalization and digital standardization. And some of the projects will be described in the next presentations. Here, I would say that an active part is being taken by the leading Russian companies and German companies, and also the authorities uh, such as Rostandard and Ministry of Economy and Energy of Germany take an active part. Our 
Council works actively uh, and in December in Munich being invited by the German part, we were discussing the operation of our working groups. So we've created the plans for this year. In February, we had the meeting in Berlin uh, with the committee of uh, the economy and the RSPP where we've approved the activities of our council. And last week on July the 3rd, we had the meeting of our expert groups, online meeting of our expert groups. And we say that in spite of any pandemic, the work of our working groups and the possibility of uh, the offline meetings. So we would say that even in spite of the pandemic, uh, the work of our groups is very productive and the results that we obtained allow us to think about the success in future. Speaking about the main results, here we see the quality infrastructure. Uh, the issues are being discussed on development of standards based on European standards in Industry 4.0 platform in Russia. In the first turn, we were discussing the issues, and we should discuss such issues as uh, the mutual recognition of certification of products. Uh, at least we need to undertake the first steps in this direction. We need to speak about harmonization of Russian and European standards. And uh, along with uh, the European directive, and we should also pay special emphasis to such issue as the glossary in three languages, Russian, German, and English in industry for zero. Because for creation of common platforms and standards, one should have the uniform understanding of the terminology. And this is one more presentation that will be made. And uh, also the issues related to development of catalogs based on E-class standard are important and the digital system of continuous monitoring of uh, the power lines uh, is very important. And here we have a cooperative effort of the Russian and German engineers, and it would produce very important effect, not only for Russia, but also on an international level. Speaking about Russia today, we see that active discussion is in place that is related to national action plan uh, related to recovery of our economy. As I've already mentioned today, in the first turn, we need to create the uniform platform for the Russian Federation industry under industry 4.0 platform and we need to implement the methods for production and cooperation between the manufacturers within industry 4.0 we need to develop standards for this platform that is why our proposals were given to rspp management to the ministry of industry and trade to the government and I think very soon Russia will start creating the platform for the Russian industry for zero. And the experience and the practice of our German colleagues is extremely important for us. Thank you for your attention. And I would like to give the floor to the Deputy Minister of Industry and Trade of the Russian Federation, Alexei Besprozvanny. We work in close interaction with uh, this ministry. I'm speaking about our committee and I'm grateful uh, for them, for their support and for understanding and mutual work. Thank you very much. You have 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, distinguished colleagues, dear friends. A lot of things have been said and we were talking about the council operation. I would like to focus on some elements which were named. First of all, I would like to thank for invitation to such an important event. You know that we are always actively participating in this work and the results of our joint meetings were already mentioned. Recently, we often talk about development of standards 
for application in digital manufacturing and digitalization of the process of standards development, taking into account the importance of standardization, which my colleague will talk about. I mean, Alexey Abramov, head of the standard group. We need to provide standardization of all the elements of the system of technical regulation. And we believe that this is one of the key vectors which is provided for in the strategy of the Russian Federation. And the control for the compliance is capable of giving advantages in technological and protection of market. We shall take all the advantage of this opportunity, taking into account the development of advanced technologies, complicated chains of supply and multiplication of number of items of production, protection of the market, which is not safe. These are the factors which undoubtedly and which undoubtedly require modernization of all the standards which exist. I would like to mention that in order to achieve that, being a Minister of Industry and Trade, we involved our colleagues and we made very significant changes into the federal regulation. I'm talking about the law on measurement in priorities of electronic documentation in the sphere of metrology. And for example, State Duma is already considering the project on standardization changing in the Russian Federation. These changes cover application of the systems of standardization. In my brief presentation, I would like to focus on digital technologies in the sphere of compliance and conformity assessment. Assessment of conformity is one of the basic part of the technical regulation system. I would like to emphasize that here we're talking about, first of all, similar registers of documents and register modules of the data gives us an advantage of simultaneous formation of transparency of the documentation system and assessment of risks, especially against fakes and the uh, documentation for every unit of product is very important at every stage of its life cycle, which we are doing with our colleagues now. And the ministry itself is involved in synchronization of the data from governmental information system, federal system of accreditation. That is why the system of marking of commodity of goods in Russia is one of the most efficient tool in counting of illegal trade and illegal products selling. We need to provide correlation of information on the products, which is a part of different information system, including the information on conformity assessment. Dear colleagues, we're talking about transition to the legal framework. That is why we believe that we have certain success in this part. Part of the documents are being printed on the blanks, on the forms. It's such a comfortable model of transition. And all the data, all the information and all the content is being transferred to the register and to the certification bodies. Number two, full transition to electronic documentation on conformity assessment. Currently, we are developing the regulation and normatives which provide for the natural plan transition. The same work is conducted by the Russian Economic Committee on the different levels. And the third stage is aimed at long-term perspective development. It's a very complicated transition from natural testing of products to the testing conducted on the basis of digital tests. And another important component of the technical regulation is public control, which is inevitable. Its function could be also become digital. It's very important because some agencies already have their internal system, for example, Mercury for agricultural sphere regulation, protection of consumers' rights, Rospotrebnadzor developments, etc. And in the third quarter of this year, it's expected to adopt the law on public control and monitoring of the Russian Federation. 
This document is aimed at control in digital form, register on directives, etc. There are cloud solutions on automation of control activities, and this activity, of course, will be continued. And I would like to expand on the project of informing and raising awareness of the harmful production which does not correspond to the requirements of the technical regulation. It started in all the countries of the custom union and, on, and uh, is, it will be considered at the meeting of the governmental committee. All the agencies should control within the same system, the cooperation between them should be established, which provide us protection of the market. And we will have the transparent marking of products and goods. I would like to thank everybody, first of all, Andrei, for your cooperation with Ministry of Industry and Trade. I briefly described our projects. I know that you are reporting on the results of your work. Once again, I would like to emphasize that all the work today is conducted in the sphere of synchronization of the national infrastructure and digital transformation of the Ministry of Industry and Trade. That is why we are engaged in all the works which I mentioned. We are open for your proposals. We are willing to modernize our systems and to move forward towards the aim which was mentioned, synchronization of our platforms in particular. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexei, for interesting presentation, for your support. I believe that the next meeting of the Council will take part with participation of you or other representatives of the Ministry. We will be happy to see you. Thank you very much, and I would like to give the floor to the representatives of DIN, DKE, VDE, Dr. Dennis Kenji Kipker. Please take the floor, Mr. Mr. Kenji Kipker. Thank you very much for the possibility to speak here today. I will now share my screen with you, share the presentation slides. So hopefully everyone can see my screen right now. Um, it is a pleasure to be here today and to make a presentation of the legal framework of IT security in Germany and Europe. And as we all know, the legal background is uh, very important for creating uh, business relationships, for creating effective IT security. And for this reason, we'll have this short presentation today. I will start with a very general overview of the situations that we face. So we have three different layers of uh, cyber security regulation. Firstly, uh, the European level, the European law here, which can be seen at the top of this pyramid, the German federal law, as well as the federal state law, which consists of the 16 federal states of Germany. And the most important um, legal resources uh, that can be found by us uh, um, are prescribed by the European law here, particular uh, by European regulations and directives, as well as the German federal law. So that means the German constitution, federal laws based on these constitutions and sublegal ordinances and statutes. And on the right hand side, you can see an overview of the most important uh, legal regulations of the recent years addressing uh, cyber security, but also data protection. So uh, you might have heard already of some of them. So firstly, the EU Network Information Security Directive as of 2016, which uh, mostly protects uh, digital service providers, as well as important or critical infrastructures. We have the European Data Protection Regulation, which came into force in 2016. And Two years later, it became effective in 2018. And this law um, has been cited a lot in the press and the media in the recent years, not only here in Germany, on the European Union, but all, all throughout the world as well. And there we can also find special regulations dealing with uh, security of, of data, 
uh, when we come to the use of personal data, uh, data by state authorities or companies, for example. Then we have the so-called European Cyber Security Act that came into force in June last year, 2019. And this um, regulation, which is directly applicable in all of the European member states, goes beyond um, the EU NIST directive of 2016, because the uh, main regulatory goal of this law is to protect the complete uh, digital interior uh, market of the European Union, um, to facilitate the market access of companies uh, all throughout the European Union, as well as compliance procedures, and to protect uh, the consumer, because consumer trust uh, in today's digitized society is more important than ever. Then we have a draft version of the European Union law, which is called the EU Regulation for European Cyber Security Competence Network and Center. And this uh, special regulation will deal with an own European um, administrative authority and research authority um, dealing with the cyber security topic. And um, you can also see that there are several German regulations. We have two IT security laws of Germany. The first one came into force in the year 2015, so five years ago. And um, the implementation procedure of this law has been finished for most um, critical infrastructures which are being defined by this law two years ago. And based on this law, there's a so-called Critis regulation of the uh, German Federal Ministry of the Interior which was published in two parts in 2016 and 2017. And this sub-legal uh, ordinance prescribes uh, legal thresholds by numbers um, when you can be identified as a critical infrastructure here in Germany. We have the second IT security law. I will give some more information about this law later on, which is still a draft version. The first, uh, draft has been issued in 2019 and then we have a very recent new draft uh, dating on May 2020 and then finally the second implementing data protection law of Germany which also changed uh, the German data protection law as a whole by integrating uh, the um, main regulations of the GDPR into the uh, German um, IT security law here uh, the German BSI law which includes now extended use of personal data for reasons of IT security. And when we put all the regulations together that we had until the year 2016 on European level, as well as on national German level, um, we can take a look uh, onto this chart here that I have created. So we see on the left-hand side, the operators of critical infrastructures and of digital service providers, for, for example, energy um, providers. And on the right-hand side, we see as a federal information security authority of Germany, which is called uh, Bundesamt für Sicherheit in der Informationstechnik, BSI, as well as a European authority that is in charge uh, for cyber security issues. That means the European Network Information Security Agency, ENISA. And you already see it here on the right hand side that BSI and ENISA work together. And what are the duties um, prescribed by law for the operators of these uh, critical infrastructures? So, firstly, on the left hand side, you can see them four bullet points. They have to ensure that there's an essential technical uh, protection of the IT system that are necessary for the functioning of the critical infrastructures these measures have to be have to correspond to the state of the art and the state of the art of course is not a term which is legally being defined so we need to go back to standardization here and every measure that is being taken by such a provider operator underlies a cost benefit calculation as an adequacy assessment and every operator has to uh, create a contact point to the federal information security office of germany and report any issues uh, which are relevant for cyber security to this authority and that means any uh, significant disruption of the it that might lead to a failure or a disruption um, has to be um, um, it has to be informed has to be informed by the bsi and the bsi collects all this information as a central reporting unit and uh, issues one and alarm messages gives updates and situation reports about cyber security back to the contact points of the operators they 
put it into their information security management system, evaluates the whole situation. And then we have a um, business continuity management here or plan to check act circle, which is also prescribed by law. And everything you see here is based on the uh, political cyber security strategies of Germany, as well as of the um, European Union. And uh, the current legislation that we face uh, will go beyond that. So uh, we had this network information security directive of the European Union. We had the IT security law of Germany dating on 2015. And now we have the EU Cyber Security Act, which came into force last year. And I mentioned it in the beginning, the main goal of this um, EU Cyber Security Act is to facilitate the trade um, in the European digital single market. And uh, one main asset of this um, EU Cyber Security Act is to create a so-called cyber security certification. And you see here on this slide that there are three different levels of cyber security certifications that are being prescribed by this EU um, CSA. And the assurance levels uh, that have to be reached by any product or service um, are associated uh, with the risk um, and that is that comes up with intended use of the uh, information or communication technology product or the service or the process, the probability as well as the impact of a possible ex, um, incident um, with regard to IT security. And currently we have a rolling work program started on European Union level, which is led by the European Commission. And this um, rolling work program defines a list of relevant ICT products uh, and services. Currently, um, this certification according to CSI is uh, voluntary at the moment, but it might change for certain infrastructures such as critical infrastructures. And in case of a, a certification according to CSI or a state of conformity after self-assessment on the lowest level of the CSI, a supplementary cybersecurity information has to be made publicly available. So here again, this uh, face the situation that the law prescribes more and more transparency with regard to cybersecurity. And when we take a closer look onto these cybersecurity levels that you see here, basic, substantial, high, we can say that uh, these cybersecurity levels will be used for different kinds of products, of course. So the basic level only says that the product or service meets the basic requirements have has been evaluated uh, at a level intended to minimize the known basic risk of incidents and cyber attacks. So mostly for consumer products, the substantial level says that uh, the product must be able uh, to counter attack um, cyber security risks uh, or cyber security incidents that are carried out by actors with limited skills and resources, mostly important for industry 4.0. And the highest level says that the product or service has to be able um, to um, counter attack um, attacks that are uh, correspondent to the state of the art and that are carried out by uh, actors with very significant skills and resources. And the highest level will be, in my opinion, be relevant for so-called critical infrastructures that are also being related by the German IT security law as well as the Network Information Security Directive of the EU. And currently in Germany, we are discussing the draft version of the second IT security law of Germany, which uh, based on the first uh, law that had been issued five years ago. And the uh, intention of this law is quite similar uh, compared uh, to the current uh, political situation that we have in the European Union, because the main intention of the law is to make a further development um, of cybersecurity for the society as a whole. So it means not only the protection of the critical information infrastructures, but to protect all relevant companies and state authorities, as well as consumers, that means private persons, which are mostly using um, IoT products. And we have a co-regulation in certain fields here in the EU Cybersecurity Act and German IT security law. And I just um, made up here some of the most important aspects uh, that the new regulatory um, approach of Germany includes, but this is still a draft version. So everything I say here might be changing in the next month. So we have the protection of citizens by a so-called unified IT security mark. So a higher vis visibility for IT security can generally be reached. 
um, the German Federal Authority for Information Security will have many extensions of legal powers, um, as well as for criminal prosecution authorities to fight against cybercrime. We will have new cybersecurity duties for providers, for example, the deletion, reporting, and the provision of cybersecurity relevant information. And there will be a more and effective cooperation among authorities with regard to cybercrime and some amended regulations for operators of critical infrastructures and important uh, companies. The first version um, of this draft of the second IT security law also included some extensions in the German criminal code and the German criminal prosecution code, but these uh, extensions have been canceled in the second draft version dating on to 2020. Uh, to come to a conclusion for my short presentation, what are the um, impacts of the current IT security legislation for businesses and consumers? So firstly, for businesses, we have many laws here in the European Union that have been made clear, I guess. And uh, the result, of course, is that uh, we have new resources that have to be developed by uh, the companies to be compliant with the upcoming cybersecurity regulation here in Germany and the European Union. And we have also seen that uh, it is not more only the protection of critical infrastructures, which is important here, but the consumer trust. And this is one of the key elements uh, of EU cyber politics in the next years. And the certification um, is a very good situation for um, many companies because it allows uh, to create a single certification, which is valid in all European member states. So uh, certification efforts are much more manageable and uh, not as costly as they are today. And these certificates can also be used for marketing purposes. This is explicitly stated by law. For consumers, um, the current cybersecurity regulation means that they will be able in the future uh, to choose between products, knowing their security level. And uh, for this reason, the um, consumers will also be able to make evaluation of security efforts of companies and will be able to make more informed choices than they are today. Here again, transparency is one of the key factors of, of cybersecurity policy and informational self-determination. This is a legal um, key that we have in the European data protection law. will go beyond that. It will be here in uh, IT security regulation as well that uh, informational self-determination is becoming more and more important. So that's it for my very short overview of European and German cybersecurity regulation. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Microphone, Pasha, so I've closed it. Please turn on your microphone. Thank you very much for the presentation. We have the group on cybersecurity in our council, and I think that the requirements of this new legislation will be discussed there and uh, considered by this group. Uh, this information is really very interesting. Thank you very much. I would like to give the floor to the next speaker, to the head of Rostandart, Alexei Abramov. Our committee is cooperating uh, with Rothstandart and uh, Mr. Abramov in particular. Thank you very much for introduction. It's really nice to be here with you today, and I'm grateful to the RSPP management, and I would like to pass my gratitude to Mr. Pontansky for organizing this event. It's a tradition to have in the prom in the hospitable end of the Urals, but today we have a new format for this event. And uh, there is a Jewish joke about Granny Sarah, who speaks about the video communication technologies. It's a good thing you have guests, but you don't need to feed them. So it's really great that we gather together today. Uh, we have very close cooperation with our friends from Germany, uh, along uh, with the discussions we have uh, in Roth Standard. We have the BTB cooperation uh, on the Comet cooperation. We work with Dean 
Uh, we work with Marcus. We see each other at different events, uh, in the events organized by the Ministry of Economy. And we also have cooperation in the European Organization on Standardization. And our colleagues work in close cooperation with uh, the German accreditation body. So that is what I would like to say that even though it was mentioned that we do not have the intergovernmental committees, it doesn't prevent us from having the partnership relationships and uh, developing our cooperation in digital transformation. I cannot but speak about the effect the pandemic makes on us. Everyone remembers the uh, Turgenev's novel, Fathers and Children, and the conflict of generations, and the conflict that we have between millennials, boomers, and that conflict of generations was somehow smoothed down, and people of older generations, they managed to experience those instruments and technologies, digital instruments that had never been used before, and we were able to see this in practice when the remote instruments were brought to life, the video communication, digital badges that were used by the original authorities for regulating and limitation of uh, the spread of the new infection. And also remote education for school children and students. And recently we had the online voting for amendment to our constitution. And I would say that the digital literacy of our population nowadays is much higher. And of course, we see that the digital, digital consciousness in government sector grows and the leaders and government leaders and the officials responsible for certain directions in industry, they get understanding of how to use digital instruments for improving efficiency of their work. Uh, in our academy of the state service, we have uh, the training courses for experts in CDTO who have certain knowledge and skills for the government agencies to be able to bring to life the programs of digital transformation. I was a trainee under this program and a lot of experts are being trained for the government sector to be able to respond to challenges that are existing at the moment. We see that the digital services are accelerated in our everyday life. We can see it every day. We can see it at work, in the car. Uh, we see it when we go in for sports or have leisure. We use these instruments this way or another, and we're using the achievement of digital revolution. Uh, I got different messages today. Perhaps uh, this is due to the fact that we have the Inaprom Marathon, and uh, this is the high-tech conferences that goes in parallel under Skolkova Fund. And we've received a report about uh, rating on digital preparedness of our small and medium businesses. And our experts, uh, account for the fact that this BDI uh, index increased during the pandemic and these services are being used, digital services and tools are being used not only by, by large companies but also by SMAs uh, and as for cyber security or cyber stability. This is probably used to least extent but we are mainly speaking about the sales channels and optimization of business processes. Based on this, I would like to make an overall assessment about what is happening with the quality structure of Russia, and I would like to speak in details about standardization. We've analyzed the data that was generated by our national quality infrastructure, and we see millions of transactions that are happening per year for provision of security for products and services consumed not only in Russia, but also in Eurasian Union. And what we see, 
we see that in spite of certain information system, dedicated information system, the quality of the data is low. And it's not possible to utilize this data for sophisticated analytics. We still have the paper documents speaking about the relationships between the regulator and market participants and clients in terms of certain services or relationships between the authorities or, or governing boards. We do not have the information exchange on a desirable level. And this, of course, makes a negative impact uh, from the point of view of bad players in the market. We see fake documents. There are some cases when we deal with fake documents and we have to initiate investigations of these cases. We need to look for the fraud and we need to struggle with such a phenomena and we do not have the instruments of tra traceability of products. We see some process challenges. When we see digital factories, smart grids, when we design smart cities or develop intellectual transport system, a traffic system, but it requires special approaches to quality infrastructure. And I would like to pronounce six major directions in terms of digital transformation in quality structure. The first one have already been mentioned, implementation of ledger, ledgers in terms of recording of the results. This is related to testing, metrology, etc. Another direction is the electronic document exchange between the users and regulators and the regulator authorities. Number three is digital libraries with uh, technical documentation, standards, catalogs, and other reference materials. Number four, and it has already been mentioned, is the creation of digital twins for industrial system testing facilities and measurement systems. Number five would be remote access and control, calibration, and uh, remote inspection. And the last thing is the implementation of digital services based for the, uh, for the client and made for the client, uh, cloud repositories, cloud storages, interface adapters, etc. And along with the digital tab, we need to speak about the full scale implementation of the digital quality structure and it requires the changes in this policy and we need to reconsider the legislation that uh, regulates the technical regulation standardization metrology uh, conformity assessment and government control over products and it will require certain undertakings by for authorities, the Ministry of Industry and Trade of the Russian Federation, Ministry of Economic Development and Ross Standard and Ross Accreditation for our information system. And I will speak about the Berista system that uh, our Ross Standard is responsible for. We are working in this direction. We have certain legislative initiatives that have already been adopted in terms of metrology in the first zone. We are preparing for adoption of the law on transition into digital format. And as for standardization, we also have a digital project. All of these systems have to be integrated and uh, these systems have to be aligned in such a way that they have to have interfaces for connection with applications. The problems and challenges that we might face is the fact that we have very conservative regulations. We are very conservative towards changing the requirements or adop adopting the laws. We do not have enough funds to support and to sustain our information systems. We, we are lacking coordination and we do not have enough IT skills. That is why we will have to work on solving all of these issues. Now I will briefly tell you about Berista. 
So you have one minute, un unfortunately. Uh, this information system, uh, we already implemented the basic shell for this system, uh, and these basic functions would be planning, standardization program, and this is the system that will be used for work of our technical committees, more than 250 uh, users, and we expect the growth of up to 2,500 uh, users, and we are implementing the project on digital transformation. And by 2025, we will have the uniform environment for development of standards. And the results that we see at the moment is that uh, we are rapidly developing standards from 23 to three months we've managed to reduce the period of development of a standard and during pandemic we've seen the upbreak uh, in our activities and we would say that in the future period we will see more new projects and the government standards approved uh, for june we've already posted uh, 284 drafts of standards for public discussion we are moving in this direction and we would like to have face-to-face -face communications along with such online interaction and taking the advantage of being at this platform i would like to invite everyone we have a draft date for october 14th through 16th and i would like to invite the participants for this conference on standardization we think it will be the series of such events, and I hope that I will be able to see all of you, and I would like to wish health and success to all of you. I would like to wish you all to be very productive. Thank you very much. We will certainly take part in your events with great pleasure, and I would like to give the floor to next speaker. I would like to give it to the Director of Technical Regulation and Standardization of uh, Siemens Corporation, Mr. Margus Regal. And this year, uh, they will celebrate uh, 10 years of uh, us knowing each other and 10 years of our cooperation. And in October 2010, we started and we've launched a new, very successful project. And I'm grateful for our good relationships and I appreciate the work that we're doing together. I would just like to apologize and tell you about the timing. Only 10 minutes you have. Thank you, Andre. I am now getting started to share my screen. There it comes. And I make it full screen. Well, there it is. Uh, like this. Now, my presentation, uh, thank you for having me invited to this uh, conference is all about uh, the German Industry 4.0 initiative and its standardization aspects in which my company Siemens is of course strongly involved. If you allow me, I have uh, kind of uh, made a citation of uh, Gaspardin Dahmen's uh, presentation. Um, and I can only say I fully uh, agree what Mr. Damen said about the concept and philosophy of Industry 4.0. However, I like to add, look at the green uh, printed um, text, that all this can only um, function uh, after all if we make sure uh, that a common technical language is established. A common technical language that um, helps the Internetworking, the meshing of the machinery across country borders based on standards. However, as the standards are not just there to take them and uh, use them, you gotta first make them by your own. At least the most of them have to be done uh, all from scratch. We make it a three step procedure, kind of like you say in Russia. Raz, dwa, tri, dawajcie. <laughs> and the first step, uh, Raz, is always to make, make a plan. And this plan in Germany for the German industry uh, for zero community is uh, represented by the so-called standardization roadmap. The roadmap uh, would uh, have a look at the left-hand side. The roadmap would first 
collect the use cases, uh, the application scenarios of industry uh, to uh, determine from there what the concepts, more the theoretical concepts are uh, that you have to establish. After that, in a next step, the identification of technologies has to take place. And based on concepts, use cases and technologies, you would be capable of identifying the need of standards, either complementing existing standards, improving existing standards and having them complemented with extensions, or develop new ones from scratch. By the way, you can download uh, this uh, German Industry 4.0 standardization roadmap from the web. It's available in English language. And our strong recommendation is, or rather formulated as a question, why not make it a Russian version of it in your, as one of the first tasks in your future uh, Russian Industry 4.0 platform. Let me come to step two. Dva is always to define an architecture. For defining an architecture, there is no need of, uh, say, much advanced technologists. It's more a matter of standardization experts that go to ISO and IEC and develop, say, an architectural framework and have it all the way uh, published in form of a standard. The so-called reference architecture model, Industry 4.0, that um, has been defined as the reference architecture for the German Industry 4.0 concept was published as the IEC document 63088 in 2017. And I'd like to congratulate uh, the uh, Russian National Committee and especially my friend uh, Professor Boris Pozneyev and uh, other members uh, of uh, his committee that they have managed to implement this standard also in the MEKI-X uh, 63088 standard uh, in a Russian version, which is now available to the Russian Industry 4.0 community to get a basic orientation how architectural thinking is being done in industry. Now coming to step three, three to elaborate and elaborate specific elements, make the standards themselves. I just make it uh, an example of only merely one, one single standard out of maybe 1000 that you would need to realize industry 4.0, which is the so-called asset administration shell, abbreviation AAS. This is not any longer a matter that you make based on standards management persons, but more you would look for real IT software specialists, we call them the coding nerds. They would also go besides IEC, ITU to uh, foreign consortia such as the World Wide Web Consortium, the EGLAS or the Internet Engineering Task Force. What they would do there as an example for the um, asset administration shell are projects to actually implement in detail uh, this particular standard that partly is not any longer being published in a paper form or a PDF like a textbook, but it will be kind of a source code uh, that you can immediately uh, implement onto a, a target hardware by compiling it uh, into your uh, operating system. That is a typical example of only but one of many, many standards uh, that you would have to make. The work item of this particular one is already uh, up and running in the IEC Technical Committee 65. Now, let me come to an appeal, to the appeal both towards the German as well as to the Russian industry community. We have already successfully and very promising started our cooperation in uh, the uh, Council uh, under the leadership uh, of uh, uh, Dr. Pompianski and the management of my uh, friend Andrei Lotsmanov. 
And as you can see, there are a lot of companies and institutions at either side already committed to contribute, like uh, Volkswagen, Siemens, of course, the SMS, CIMAC Group, the Bosch, the Schule, uh, Pressen, uh, machine tool industry. And on the Russian side, you would see, of course, the TMK, the steel and pipe makers, the Codex company, uh, that uh, the Kamas uh, making the heavy trucks, and um, academia, likewise, the uh, State University Stankin. Uh, now, if we bring this all together from the Russian side on the platform of RSPP, from the German side on the platform of DIN and the Ostausschuss, and have it somehow well coordinated also with Ross Standard, we will be capable to define joint preferences in industry criteria and have it fed and forwarded into the international bodies such as ISO, IEC, and ITU when it comes to uh, full-blown uh, international uh, clubs as well as to the consortia that are outlined uh, below. I think we are on a good way to make this project a success and uh, I am grateful for anyone who uh, will contribute in a, a valuable manner. Thank you indeed for your attention and uh, I'd like to not uh, close my presentation without giving greetings to my friends in uh, Maastricht and in Ekaterinburg. Thank you. Спасибо. Спасибо, господин Райк, за добрые слова. Thank you very much for such a welcome and such a good words. Thank you for your interesting presentation and for your proposal. I really hope that in November in Geneva at the Assembly General of IEC, we will have an opportunity to discuss your proposal in more details with participation of Alexey Abramov and German colleagues. It's a very good proposal. Thank you very much. And I would like to give the floor to Mr. Jens Bulma, representative of the Committee of German Economy, a person who was found one of the founders of our council and who is contributing a lot to organization of cooperation of our expert group and who in, invested a lot of efforts into our conference. I would like to give you the floor, Mr. Bellman, please take the floor. Thank you very much. Dear Mr. Shokin, dear Mr. Dunn, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues and friends. Um, and now I will speak Russian for interpreters. So all our Russian colleagues could understand me. It's a long tradition that my presentation is in Russian. In the very beginning, I would like to answer the question of Mr. Shahin. Of course, we are willing as German economy, as a committee, and we are willing to support initiative it's good that interdisciplinary commission is required. We shall do that on the level of economy. It's always a good idea. Honestly, for me, it's a great honor and a great pleasure to take part in Inaprom even this year, despite the impossible in, in despite the lack of possibility to present at the trade fair which proves stability it proves stability of russian and german relations even during pandemic which is very important mr taben and mr lotsman lotsmanov mr rago discussed and talked in details about russian initiative on technical regulation i can confirm that both sides are investing as much effort as possible on formulation and deliberation of the normatives because this is the basis for the business 
business is based on that. I repeat once again. And I cannot change the slide. Sorry. Special attention within the initiative is drawn to the industry, which is obvious, in particular in Germany. This sector has the significant share of GDP, which is very significant within the strategy of economic development of Germany till 2030. Minister of Industry and Trade of Russia has already elaborated very similar document strategy of processing industry of the Russian Federation in a period till 2024 and the period till 2035. If we compare these two strategies, we can see many similarities. For example, increasing of industrial production, increasing of competitiveness and maintaining competitiveness, development of SMEs in the sphere of industry. To my point of view, this is very important. Protection of strategically important infrastructure, maintaining of strategically important industries, digitalization of economy as a whole, and which is also important investment in research and development. Despite the challenges that we have, our targets are more or less similar. The difference is the sphere which are priorities for the countries, the spheres which requires innovations or changes. In Germany, in Europe, it's internet platform and Russia, of course, is focused on that, where technologies of the future play leading role. Electrical cars and autonomous driving were developed in Germany then, but now, unfortunately, we have to start it all over again. In Germany, there are 99%, once again, 99% of all the companies are SMEs or family owned companies. For them, it's vital to become digital. Russian strategy is focused, first of all, on increasing competitive advantages of expert and increasing expertise of the personnel. As for Internet of Things and artificial intelligence are present in the strategies of both countries. All the above mentions allow us to identify different areas of cooperation between Russian, Russia and Germany. Digitalization, Industry 4.0, Russia should and shall play a leading role in restructurization of supply chains. At the moment, such project is being developed. How to do that, how to achieve this goal, how Russian companies could take part in the project. As it was mentioned, when the cars will have an opportunity to talk the machines will talk to machines. It will happen soon. They will need one language. Unified standards are necessary on digitalization of economy. As Mr. Rigel said, ontology, semantology, etc. And development of the system of unified regulations for economic space, for Eurasian economic space and European Union. The most important in this process is harmonization of standards. Mr. Lotsmanov in the very beginning says that the normative and regulations are the basics, and that's correct. The advantages of optimization and cooperation is obvious. Strengthening economic power, competitiveness, partnership, equal partnership with the US and China, best practices, digitalization based at unified normative and standards, facilitating access to markets, 
improvement of financing, facilitation of access to intellectual resources, joint projects in research and development sphere. Allow me to summarize my presentation with the such an interesting question. We live in 21st century. There will be three economic powers, Europe, China, and the US. For me, Europe includes Russia because we are the same continent. We live all together and we all together can solve the problems. We are Europeans. We need to combine, we need to join our efforts and to focus on our strength and continue cooperation. We need to continue cooperation. In this case, we will be not only strong competitors, but we will be the same, the whole Europe. Thank you very much for your attention. I wish everybody interesting participation in Tinaprom and as all certificators say, who owns the regulations own the market. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for your interesting presentation. And once again, thank you very much for a huge job in preparation of our conference. As a person to a person, a person cannot understand a person without the same language and machines should speak the same language too. And for that, we need same terminology, both in Russian and English, and of course in German as well. And this very important step, which was already made, but our council is preparation of a glossary in three languages. Dmitry Pumpiansky signed the introduction to this glossary. We are giving it to Mr. Tamin. I hope that he will also sign the introduction and we will publish with this wonderful glossary, which was, which was prepared by expert group, led by Boris Pazneev. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this opportunity to speak with my presentation and to briefly introduce the work which was done within the frameworks on the Council on Technical Regulation and Standardization and Association of Digital Innovation in Machine Building Sector, which I am, where I am a chairman of the board. And now I would like to show my presentation. It's very practical to my point of view. Dear colleagues who are assisting me, could you please demonstrate my presentation? Could you please focus, scale it? After such interesting presentations, but Mr. Rigel, Mr. Berman, and Andrei Osmanov about importance of standardization and standards development, I would like to focus your attention on the issue which is related with systematization and standardization of terminology for Industry 4.0. The terminology base right now is the core of the ideas which are part of the concept of Industry 4.0. Terminolo terminology base will contribute to expanding the standards which are supported by the architecture of Industry 4.0. It will contribute to elaboration of new terminology and their adoption and of course, harmonization of this terminology. Next slide, please. I should not expand on the importance of the digital multilingual glossary. Our colleagues from Germany did great job in preparation of this glossary in both German and English languages. It was the basis, the foundation of our work and we not only translated the glossary into Russian, but we analyzed it systematically. We combined the terminology, taking into account the whole spectrum of the standards existing and interconnection between this terminology. Another idea is related with the fact that trans-border 
character of development of platform of industry for zero in development provides for expanding the number of languages where the term on which the terminology should be presented today we do not have systematization of terminology especially in different languages it makes our future processes of integration more difficult in this regard to our point of view this is the first job done by us within the framework of the council this work could be promoted and become a serious pro project for developing a glossary of industry for zero on this slide i present the initiative on glossary elaboration i said that it was the russian and german council and expert council of association of digital innovation in machine building where we have a very important group of experts with expertise in this sphere with large experience in standards elaboration and they work on multilingual glossary in the sphere of standardization i would like to draw your attention to the fact that the basic the initiative was based on industry for zero and the report including 81 terms and their definitions it was the basics for us and in addition to that we did a large job in unifying the existing standards projects in the sphere of standardization of e-business classification e-class and other documents available within the frameworks of international organizations i would like to emphasize that the number of terms related to the platform industry for zero are about 1000 items nevertheless multilingual glossary includes the basic terms defining the concept here i present a fragment of the glossary as for russian version it's not just a translation it's the link it's relation on the right column you can see that it's not just a term and its definition and also the interconnection between the terminologies which are part of this definition and the next slide you can see three basic terms which is obvious where you can see the systematic correlation and these correlations are very important for the future users of this glossary because understanding of terminology and their interconnection is the basics for the new terminology wording to make them harmonized and systematic the basic term as just like in russian version reflects the semantic interconnection on the basis of the semantic charts it's a very good option of visualization today we have significant progress using the artificial intelligence to analyze the interconnections between the terminology in the future we would like to use this intellectual support means for design of new terms i would like to draw your special attention to these images you can see that the basics of the terminologies are terms in russian english and german today we can say that there is the third version on the russian language i would like to recall that official iso languages are three languages english french and german very often i'm involved in terminology problems because during the last 20 years i work actively in international organizations and i witness how difficult 
is to increase the number of official languages, to adopt standards in even free languages. In particular, we faced a very serious objection on behalf of some English-speaking countries when we offered the glossary for the e-training. It required us five years to adopt such an international standard in free languages. Today, taking into account the situation, the development of the concept of Industry 4.0 concept founded by our German colleagues, I believe that it is necessary to further promote and expand, increase the number of languages, including German language. It will not be simple, but I believe that it is very important. Mr. Losmanov, I see I'm about to finish my presentation. Today, we develop not only Russian version, but also the Czech language. I believe that in the future, we will also have French version. And in the nearest future, we will probably have Chinese, Korean, and Japanese translation. This methodology was provided for in our project. Here, I would like to emphasize once again that within the frameworks of our Council of Technical Regulations, two areas related with machine building and production supported this job. Association of Digital Innovation also supported our project. And please give me five seconds to demonstrate four slides and this is association. These are our areas in the association related with standardization. Our committees formed and dozens of experts who are involved and the last slide. I would like to thank the colleagues and our vision. The publication, the addition of this glossary, expanding of this glossary, probably together with our colleagues from Germany, we will make it a mega project on digital glossary. Thank you very much, Boris Mikhailovich, for interesting presentation and for the job you've done. We often say that our council is for industry, we provide standards for industries, and now I would like to give the floor to Viktor Lesh, Director General of Sinara Transport Machine Corporation, representative of the industry for whom we are doing all that. Mr. Lesh, please share your experience. Thank you very much. Dear colleague, I am grateful for the opportunity to talk during this session. And I would like to say that I'm lucky lucky to be at the end of all of the discussions and at the end of presentations because my presentation that i'm going to demonstrate will speak about practical solutions that were implemented by scenario transport machines in our interaction with our main customer the Rus russian railways so i think everything is on the screen here i would like to mention that the russian railways started the digital transformation in 2017 and one of the main objectives for 2021 2022 was that uh, almost 25%, 55% of all of the operations and business processes have to be digital. And our company is the supplier of uh, equipment and processes. So we provide services for locomotive maintenance. And so we provide maintenance for the rail track and uh, other types of uh, rail track and railway equipment. And I would like to mention that we deal with the critical infrastructure, and this is what we're talking about today. And the first thing we've touched upon was the cybersecurity and the requirements in cybersecurity in terms of uh, interaction with our large scale government company. And the creation of our products 
was connected with digitalization of this pro product and provision of cybersecurity criteria and the early steps in 2017-2019 in terms of development of the digital platform for the Russian rail railways. Here on the slide, you see that by 2025, we're supposed to digitize all of the key processes and services that Russian railway provides. As for development of this platform that was called Digital Railway, uh, we were uh, one of the main players as far as we are one of two main producers and manufacturers and suppliers of the locomotives and uh, we are the ones who are developing the digital locomotive. We've created unmanned digital locomotive. Uh, such locomotives are used at Luch Luga uh, in October Sky Railway. And as for our undertaking, everything is understood and well received by Russian Railway with uh, certain requirements on data quality and format. And we've obtained the standards by experimental way. We have obtained the standards and glossary and the classifier that we we're talking about today. In the process of our cooperative effort uh, in creating the digital railroad. And being a active participant in this process, we can transform to proper regulation of our activity because we're working in probably in the most complex format of a vital cycle format life cycle format and we've already started to digitize all of our industrial facilities we've implemented the digital design for all of our digital projects and processes in production and the only thing that uh, have already been mentioned by uh, Ministry of Trade and Industry, the only thing we're lacking is the regulation and adoption of results from digital twins, tests from digital twins uh, in terms of quality and uh, we should consider on how to implement the data obtained on digital twin to real time, to real mode. And uh, today, we, 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 we need the uh, in-situ tests and uh, in situ operations uh, for the customer and we need to deal with we need to understand how to deal with digital transformation and we need to respond and we need to reduce time of response to the needs of the market we should also uh, mention about the results that we obtained in our cooperative work with siemens in digitizing our locomotives uh, as for the Russian uh, company that produces locomotives, we produce the most up-to-date uh, samples of uh, digital locomotives. And this is the way which we all try to follow. We already covered the half of it, and we are now developing the intellectual, the smart assistant uh, for control of uh, the locomotive and we need to transfer into industry 4.0 when we can implement it for the railway when our locomotives could be unmanned and could interact with the infrastructure and respond to challenges that are not always happening in routine operation and we should look ahead when we have the environment of trust and when we have this environment of trust between all of the participants of this complex process interacting with our customer one hand it would be the production but uh, our products become smart and could be controlled and could control the railway the track and collect the data weather data other types of data also send diagnostic charts in real-time mode to maintenance facilities 
for us to be able to do preventive or unplanned maintenance and there could be some other associated projects that could generate this environment starting from manufacturers and ending up with maintenance division and it will be the story of that life cycle i was talking at the very beginning it's also important that if we speak about this environment this data is being consumed by some educational institutions and not only in terms of education but also r d institutions and uh, design bureau institutions and uh, it is also important to understand that our digital infrastructure allows us to do some corrections online and validate the processes that accompany the smart railway so i will skip this slide uh, due to the fact that we're limited for time but i would like to say that similar problems uh, the European Railway also experienced and uh, those issues that we're facing with the Russian railways uh, were also discussed uh, in Austria in uh, 2019 uh, this is where we discussed the results of our work and we've also uh, discussed and processed the results and achievements that are being implemented in Europe and in Russia. We are solving the same type of tasks. We're facing the same problems. Uh, we've been talking about these problems. We're talking about challenges and uh, the terms in which we are supposed to solve these tasks are the same, are completely the same. That is why I support the proposal that was made by the colleagues, we do need the platform for Industry 4.0. We are ready, and as a company that almost covered the entire way, we have the direct threat on standardization, and I think Mr. Lotmanov is very well aware of this directorate, and uh, he is also responsible for our directorate. And as the priority tasks for this new structure, would be to develop the list of priority standards, application and digitalization of the classifiers in the system, and the concept and system of standard platform of life cycle uh, in that format that we're using. And we would like to propose to use this format as the one that will be suitable for further usage. Thank you for your attention. I am ready to answer your question. Thank you for an interesting presentation. Uh, we see that a tremendous amount of work is being conducted in this direction. And I hope that your presentation at our conference and your participation would be the first step towards the SM involvement in the work of our council. We have the expert group on railway transport and we have the interest from the German side. And I think that uh, we will be able to develop this project. Uh, then I would like to give the floor to Sergei Tikhomirov, the president of Codex Corporation uh, that is responsible for large scale work on uh, pro producing catalogs, uh, in the scope of E-class classifier. Dear colleagues, good afternoon. I'm pleased to see you here and to listen to your presentation. As previous speaker said, it's a great pleasure to be the last speaker because I listened to all the presentations and I would add everything I learned to my presentation how to turn on my presentation just a moment you have six minutes my apologies to be fair i will have nine minutes now we're talking about interaction within the council of russian russia and germany we actively participated in that and i would like to greet our German colleagues 
why I would like to talk about classification. It happens to be that I am a head of working group on so-called ontology and semantology. What's its task? Language, a language of interaction, of communication between people and technical systems, a language of communication between a person and a person. Boris Pazneyev made a great presentation about the glossary. That is why all I have to do is to talk about language of interaction between technical systems, in particular information systems. What is that? What part does classification play here? And the essence is as follows. We are talking about language, we are talking about semantology, we have ontology as well. What is ontology? Which is the meaning, the system of meanings. Industry for zero concept includes ontologic systems. Ontologic, the models of meaning are not developed. What is that? How a person creates the product like airplane, aircraft, or a car, or a missile. First of all, it's an idea. It's the term, it's ontology, it's meaning, which is in the very beginning of the process. I am confident that since digital model includes beam technologies and any beam simulation within industry for zero, which is based on digital regulation. Since what exactly moment it begins? To our point of view, it begins from the skeleton, which is ontology. What is this product? What is it made of? What's its structure? What are the characteristics? And in this regard, in addition to the fact that we have these models, we have a great need, and it will be of high demand, in digital systems, which are called the requirement management system. It allows to turn an idea into the beginning of a digital model. And this subject within this working group, within everything related with the business we are dealing with, we started to immerse into this topic. This is an example. Mr. Rigel, it will be interesting for you. Jointly with representatives of CAMAS, Federal University of the Euro Federal District, our technologies were applied to the ontological model of the future track CAMAS, which means every component of the car which has certain characteristics. We learned all about the requirements, internal standards of CAMAS, international standards, and we divided them. The future track of CAMAS should correspond, and it's each unit should correspond to that requirement. And this is an example of the meaning model of CAMAS. After that, the designers will work they will take these characteristics and will say that we are going to design. Then manufacturers will work with it. This is the model which I consider the best one for industry for zero. After that, an idea is monitoring the life cycle and monitoring that the idea complies with the requirements on security, for example, and the technical system at the same time should interact one with each other. This is the model industry for zero that I have. Today, I would like to talk about European classificator. Why? Because this classificator performs or includes the ontological model of the products produced by industry. First of all, European, then Russian. It's a very good 
very powerful database. At the same time, it's a standard classification of a products which could be applied not only for e-commerce but for interaction of technical systems. What is the feature of this standard? It's not only classifying the product. It classifies characteristics. For me, I'm a specialist in a laptop, for example, just a laptop. Let's take a laptop, but it's not only a laptop. It says what are the distinctive characteristics of this very laptop. If I need to order a laptop I need using e-commerce, I just choose the e-class and the manufacturer will provide me exactly what I need. If I need it in the future, the electronic system will send the bill on the component in accordance with this classification, and this intelligent system on the side of the manufacturer will send a new component. Just to say, in general, it's a very good industrial standard. In Russia, we have classifications, and of course, Russia will use its classification system. We shall promote within the council, within the working group, we promote the standards and we provide integration, conceptual integration. This is the ontology. We will search for within the council and we will provide this integration. I am representatives, not only an active person, I am also a businessman. Because we need to move forward, we need a progress. Our company, Codex, joined the association. We became a provider of these classificators on the territory of Russia. And now we are translating classificator into Russian. I hope if the association, I hope that it will provide us with the right, we will be responsible for the Russian version of classificator. At the same time, we have developed a special software for operation of Russian companies using this classificator. And we, taking into account the license agreements with associations, we will provide our industrial enterprises with this classificator, and we will also integrate this classificator with the Russian classification systems. And also, in addition, we develop system of management requirements, the same which exists in Siemens Center, in Kamas. We either transfer the conceptual model of Siemens or the component of our Russian development will be introduced. Me and Mr. Rigel were going to discuss that. We, Russian side, are always moving forward. We continue working despite the distance. Marcus, we are still working on that. And that probably would be it. And Mr. Bellman, I would like to tell you, business in Russia never stops. Thank you. Thank you, dear Sergey. Thanks all the participants of the conference, colleagues. The website of the committee will publish your presentations. If, of course, if you agree to publish them. And I believe that by the end of this year, we will launch the website of our council in free languages, where we will publish the reports of our working groups so our industry could see what our council is doing and take part in the work of our council actively. I would like to thank everybody. I wish you good health and all the best. Goodbye.